Hello everybody, happy art day. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm so excited you did. I hope you guys all had a really great week. I had a really nice weekend. I went camping and got to see the blue moon. It was so amazing. It wasn't actually blue, but it was really nice and big and bright. And since I was out in the middle of the woods, I could see the night sky and the stars so clearly. So that actually inspired today's class. We're going to learn a little bit about watercolor and some cool watercolor techniques and make our own night sky painting. So for today's class, you're going to need some watercolors. I'm just using like a Crayola brand watercolors. Some paint brushes, you might want a couple different sizes just to play around with. Some salt from your kitchen. A little bit of water to clean off those brushes. Um, some paper towels. A circle to trace. And a white crayon. Now I'm going to be using a couple different color crayons just so you can see what I'm doing. But if you have a white crayon, that one's the best. And of course, we're going to need some paper. If you have watercolor paper, that's awesome. Um, if you don't, computer paper works too. It's just going to be a little bit more floppy um, and maybe get a little bit more wrinkly when you use watercolor on. But that's okay. So before we start, let's do a little breathing and stretch so we can be really nice and focused and ready to make our artwork, okay? Everybody breathe in and let it go. Let's do that one more time. Breathe in and let it go. Oh, that feels good. Now let's roll our shoulders back and shrug them forward. And let's stretch out those arms and fingers. Oh. Ah. feel focused and ready to go. How about you? Good. So, first, you might want a couple pieces of paper because first we're going to play around with the deck, different watercolor techniques. They're really fun. Um, and just to show you, this is the difference between just computer paper and watercolor paper. So this one's staying a lot stiffer. And the marks are showing up a little bit better. But don't let not having watercolor paper hold you back. And then after we play around with the techniques, we're going to make our own night sky painting using those different techniques. And again, here's the difference between watercolor paint, uh, paper, which is really nice and thick, and just regular computer paper. So it looks good either way. So don't let a lack of watercolor paper get you down. So first, let's start with a little piece of paper. So I got my watercolor paper here. And um, let's get one of our brushes. Any brush will do. So first thing first, just put a little bit of water on your brush. Just enough to get the paint on there. And we'll see what kind of mark you can make with just a little bit of water and paint. And you see how that's pretty contained in that line and you can really see the texture of the page when you don't put that much water down. So now we're going to do a little bit more water so you get like a nice drippy book brush. We'll try that again. Ooh, look at that. Just adding a little bit more water. It's a lot smoother mark and you lose all that texture. Okay, 
Now we're going to need our white crayons. And uh, you're not going to really be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to outline my shapes I'm making in blue so you can see them better. But just draw next to these lines some different shapes, whatever shapes you want. I'm going to do a heart. And remember, just use the white. I'm just going to outline it in the blue so you can see it. And maybe I'll do a big X. And maybe we'll do a star. Woo, it's a funky looking star. <laughs> And remember, you're just doing it in the white. I mean, you could do it in color if you want, but the cool thing about the white is I'll show you in just a second. And then the bottom, maybe just make a couple marks. But again, you can do whatever kind of marks you want. Then we're gonna take our paintbrush and get it nice and wet this time. I'm gonna use blue to hide the blue that I put down. And you can go right over that crayon. <gasps> It's like magic! Look at that. See that waxiness of the crayon is repelling the paint. So wherever you drew white with the crayon ends up staying white. Isn't that a cool trick? I think so. Okay, this next thing is called wet on wet. And again, if you have computer paper, it might get a little bit wrinkly. If you use a lot of water, it might tear. Don't let it bum it out. Hopefully you have some more paper to work with. But uh, the trick is to get your brush nice and wet. And just with the water, my water's a little bit tinted because I only thought to have one water container when I should probably have two to do this. But anyway, I'm not going to let it get me down. So you see I'm just taking this water with the paintbrush and brushing it on there. Now I'm going to take a different brush. So I got just the water and the watercolor paper. Now I have a different brush with the watercolor on it. And boom! Look at that! Isn't that amazing? Just kind of spreads out all organically. And if you had it laying down flat, which you probably do, it would spread out more evenly. But since I'm doing this vertically so you can see it, it's dripping down. So it kind of looks like a ghost or something like that. So let's see. We'll try another color on there. Bam. Look at that. Isn't that cool? So this is called wet on wet when you put watercolor down or water down first and then you put your watercolor on top of it. It's a way to make kind of organic free forms um, that you don't have a lot of control on. So it's kind of the opposite of when you use the white crayon so you can keep the paint from going in your special shapes. Okay, the last thing we're gonna do is with the kitchen salt. This is my favorite. Um, you might have to wait until the salt is, or the paint is dry before you take the salt off to really fully appreciate this awesome effect. But I believe in your patience. So let's see, we'll do blue again. And I'm just painting it on here. Okay, I'm gonna take my salt. just sprinkle it right on there. Got a little bit to my shelf here. <laughs> okay. And what it's doing is it's where the salt lands, it, it draws all the water to it. 
making this really cool speckle or like galaxy effect if we're thinking about our stars in our sky. So you can see it here a little bit. Here's with the regular computer paper. Here's with my computer paper moon painting. The best, this one I totally put a bunch of salt on. And you see how it, the salt, it's sucking up that water and just leaving little bits of pigment. Isn't that neat? I think so. Okay, so now that we have these couple different techniques in our mind, we're gonna go ahead and make our own night sky painting. Now you can make it a landscape if you want, or you could just have it be the moon and the stars or the galaxy, or you don't even have to make a night sky. You could just play around with these different techniques and make a really cool abstract drawing painting. Yeah, it's up to you. It's your artwork. Okay. So, I'm gonna put my piece of watercolor paper up here. And I'm gonna start with my moon. Again, I'm gonna outline it in the blue crayon just so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better, but I'm gonna fill it in with the white one. But you could just do your white crayon if you don't wanna have other colors messing up your beautiful night sky. So I got my circle. I'm tracing around it. I think I'll take off some of this paper so I can cover more. Ah! Man, they really got this glued on here. Okay. I'll take off the paper so I can cover a little bit more area. Okay, so I'm using my white crayon and coloring in the inside here. Because I don't want any of my night sky interfering with my big bright moon here. Now, when I was staring at the sky this last weekend, there was a planet. I forgot to look what planet it was, but it was kind of orangey. And it was really bright too, so I'm going to put that over here somewhere. Maybe we'll put it right here. And again, I'm outlining it in a color so you can see it. And then I'm coloring it in with a white crayon all the way, just that circle, all the way colored in. Okay, so I got my moon and whatever plan that was. And I'm going to do maybe a couple other big stars and then we'll let the salt do the trick for the rest of the sky. So I'm going to do, let's see, let's do one, two, three, and we'll do one right here. I'm just going to color them all in white again. Oh, that one's going to be kind of blue. So is that one. Whoops. Okay, well, all my stars are going to be slightly blue because I have that blue outline. And my crayon is way too fat to get in the side there <laughs> without touching the edges. Okay. So I got my moon and a planet and a couple stars. Now, if you want, you can go ahead and draw... You know, maybe I want to have the very front be snowy ground. So I'm going to draw a little white line here. And use the white to color this in. So none of the watercolor gets on it. And then maybe I want to have a little mountain ridge. So I'm going to use a crayon, I'm going to use the gray, so it's going to stop the watercolor going from the sky into the mountains so I can color, paint the mountains a different color. So maybe we'll have this go like this. Okay. There we go. Now if you want, 
you could put a little bit of, of a halo kind of effect going on with your moon or really whatever you want to do. So I think maybe I'll do a little bit of a halo because it's so bright. And I'll just do a blue outline on that so you can see it again. But again, you do what you want to do. It's your artwork. Okay. So I'm going to start with the sky. I'm going to do a little bit of the, um, I'm going to do some different colors of the blues and maybe add some black and I'm going to do the wet on wet technique. So it's really spacey. Super spacey. And um, my water is blue. That's unfortunate. But it's okay because I'm going to do a blue sky so it's not not anything I'm super worried about, but if I was being really careful, I would have had another water to be clear. Okay. So you can see already that the water's stopping right at that mountain line. Again, if you're doing this flat, you wouldn't have to worry about it dripping down like I am, but I want you to be able to see this so it's easier for you to see when it's up like this. I don't know, you can let me know in the comments if it doesn't matter. So I can go right over my little star here and right over my halo here because that crayon is acting as a barrier against it. So since I want to do this wet on wet, I'm gonna just do this little section first. Okay. And I'm gonna get, let's see, a lighter blue for the inside here maybe. Ooh. Because it's closest to the moon. always good to have your paper towels handy when you're doing watercolor because you can blot stuff off. Like if I do this, it'll also add a little texture. But that way I don't have to worry about that water running down. Okay, so I got the blue, the light blue, right around the moon here. Now I'm going to get the darker blue right outside that. Oh yes, oh yes, look at that. Ooh. Okay, and see with the wet and wet, it's just nicely blending together there. We'll get this darker blue up here around the star. And I don't have to worry about painting over the star because I got that crayon down so that waxiness is repelling the blue color. I was just thinking ahead a little bit, just a little plan. Before I did my painting. Okay. Ba, 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 ba. Now, I'm gonna do a little bit of black just right on the edge here to make it really dark. But you know, if you wanna be like doing an outer space painting, you could add purples and greens and whatever you want. Your imagination is the limit. Okay, so we got that side. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of salt on it while it's still wet. So just sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle on there. Now, if you have salt concentrated more in one area, you'll get more texture going on. So you could do it all over your piece, or you could just do it in a couple places. And have a really sparkly sky. So I'm doing it all over there. I'm gonna go back over to this side and again do the water which is now really dark. So if I was doing this again, <laughs> I would probably have a second cup of water that was completely clean to do the wet on wet. But since right now I'm just using my blues, I'm not too worried about my base water being this blue gray color because I'm putting blue on top of it anyway. But I guess I should have taught you proper and Done the other water. Next time. 
Okay, I'm just dabbing right there at the bottom so it doesn't drip down. Obviously, I didn't put a good enough line right here in the corner in case I drip it down. <laughs> so again, I'm gonna do the light blue for my little halo here. Ooh. And I'm not worried about painting over that moon because that crayon is repelling the watercolor. Okay, got that. But you know, sometimes you look at the sky, the sky looks a little bit lighter when it gets closer to the horizon, when it gets closer to the earth, and then it's a little bit darker when it gets further up into space. So I'm gonna keep the bottom here a little bit lighter. There we go. And put some more water down. And again, if you're doing this just on your table flat, you shouldn't have problem with it running down. So you could just be like going to town and not being so careful like I am here. Okay, so now I'm gonna do the dark, dark blue. Got more dark blue up here. Got that dark blue. Got this dark blue going on. We'll go ahead and bring it down anyway because it's nighttime, so it's a little bit darker. And then we're gonna do the black right on the top of the black yeah i can't wait to see your guys's paintings i'm like already really excited about my painting so i can't even imagine what you guys are doing right now just got this nice blue black and moving on over with the water yeah this is just the water, it's just a little bit blue. Dab this off so it doesn't run into my mountains. Okay, so I have all the water down. If I was doing it flat, I'd just do all the water at once, but I'm doing it in sections. This is how we're going. So we'll start with the light blue on the bottom, closest to the mountains here. And then we're gonna do that deeper blue all up here. And I can go right, ooh, I can go right over my planet and not worry too much about it. And then I'm gonna do the black right on the top. And this is further away from the moon. So I'll bring the black down a little bit over here too. Cause that moon is making everything around it a little bit lighter. Just brighten up our night sky. So I got this nice inky blue black at the top, fading down to that more of like a royal blue at the bottom. And now I put my salt sprinkle over the rest of this side. Okay. Now I'm gonna do the mountains. And since it's nighttime, you can't really see other colors. Everything behind the moon is going to look pretty much like a shadow, really dark. So I'm just going to go ahead and do my black again. I'm going to start right here on the bottom. And I have that white line so I can have that snow on the bottom. So I'm going to just go right across the bottom. And again, you could just do the sky or the universe. I'm just thinking about this really awesome weekend I had camping in the chilly willy weather and looking at the awesome blue moon. Blue moon. I know we know lots of songs about the sky. Oh no! To fix that. Okay. Taking my cloth. Usually I listen to music while I paint. I could sing to you guys, but you might, you might want to turn off the camera if I did that, so. <laughs> okay, it's bleeding a little bit here. But that's okay.
Now try not to get frustrated if it's not working out how you thought it would. It's, this is just really good practice and you could try again. And you know, sometimes accidents, especially in watercolor, I feel like sometimes your accidents turn out to be the most exciting parts of your paintings because you didn't plan it and it just happened and it looks magical. Now, if you want to add anything coming up, like some trees or buildings or bats in the night sky, I don't know, whatever you want to put in there, I would wait till your painting's all the way dry and then use that dry brush technique. So wait for it dries and then do another layer with that, just a little bit of water, enough water to make a really good line on top of it. Because if you try to do some lines right now, it's just gonna kind of spread out into your sky so it's not gonna look like a real defined line. Okay, so I got this going on. Got a bit of the sky bleeding down. Again, I think that's because we're I'm painting upright here. And I can go back and make some harder lines once the paint's, painting's dry and just go over top of it again. So I got my moon and my sky and my mountain range. And I got the snow bank and I think I'll just do that little bit of brushiness on the bottom with some, some blue black to make a um, the idea of some some textures or shadows down there I mean again I put that white crayon all the way on the bottom but I think we'll still get a little bit of marks if I do this well okay so at this point we have to wait for our painting to dry and then if you wanted to add in any anything else that would be the time to do it. So wait till you're painting. Whoa, whoa. Wait till your painting dries all the way and then you can brush off the salt. Because right now if you brush it around you're just going to make some marks. And once it dries it will flake off pretty easily. Okay? If you guys have any questions, just feel free to reach out to me and either write them in the comments or you can message me on email and um i hope you enjoyed this class i thought it was really fun watercolor is really challenging but you know there's so many fun things you can do with it and it's really easy to do at your house well, thank you so much and if you like the class please subscribe like share it makes a big difference and helps me continue to make free art education for all of you i'll see you guys next week okay oh be sure to tag me in your creations i would love to see the paintings you do you can email me you can tag me on instagram or you can send me some paintings in snail mail and then we can look at them together online doesn't that sound fun? I can't wait to see your work. All the information will be down below in the informational box for this video, okay? Thank you guys so much. Have a great weekend. I'll see you next week. Bye.